Hello and welcome to this week's episode of On Deck with Avoya, your weekly travel update. I'm your host, Chris Green, Director of Network Expansion. Thank you for making time to watch our weekly show to design, that's designed to engage with you, the professional travel advisor community. So I've got a question. Are you feeling the early stages of wave season finally kicking in? I hope so. But if not, you should watch today's show very carefully and you should reach out with your request for information on the Avoya Travel Network because I'm happy to report that sales have seen a big increase over the last week plus as we've finally seen diminished COVID-19 cases, the loosening of COVID-related uh, mandates, and finally that, that travel rush that we've been talking about feels like it's beginning, at least for many members of the Avoya Travel Network. And Avoya Travel is really not the only one. In fact, just before we came on air, I was reading a Washington Post article talking about revenge travel and touting that beginning boom. So you don't want to miss out, and we're more than happy to explain our program in detail. And we do have a great show lined up for you today. Chuck Conine, owner of Travel with Charlie LLC, an independent agency in the Avoya Network, will be joining us for a great Q&A session and a Meet the Network segment. We'll be picking Chuck's brain on the current state of the industry, what he's hearing from his clients, what resources he utilizes through being part of the Avoya Network, and we'll discuss Chuck's participation on the Network Advisory Board and some of the positive things that he hopes comes from that participation. We look forward to having Chuck join us here in just a few minutes. Before we get to that Q&A, we're going to take a look at some of the top stories this week in the travel industry on our Eye on the Industry feature. Stories we'll be featuring include the latest CDC guidance for the cruise industry. Finally going the right way, I'll give you a little tip. Carnival Cruise Lines is making changes to its fleet, and Virgin Voyages opens their cruise terminal in Miami with an address that honors the brand's founder, Richard Branson. We'll get to those stories here in just a few moments. We're five weeks away from the first major industry event of 2022, Cruise 360, at the newly reopened Broward Convention Center in Fort Lauderdale. And we're going to take a moment to feature our own Vice President of Network Engagement, Tammy Ritchie, who will be one of this year's featured presenters and will wrap up today's On Deck with Avoya by featuring a few of our best-in-class resources that can help you, whether you're a seasoned travel professional or you're new to the travel industry, to hit your goals, sell more leisure travel, and of course, make sure that you have all the ways to reach out and start that conversation with Avoya Travel. Proud to be the number one host agency in leisure travel as voted by the travel industry. So let's kick off this week's On Deck with Avoya, your weekly travel update with some industry insights and our eye on the industry feature. Well, it sure felt like a big happy Valentine's Day to the travel industry as the CDC lowered, yeah, you heard me right, lowered its travel alerts for cruising to a level three. Now you remember, you might remember back a few months when COVID numbers were spiking with the Omicron variant. That was in December. The CDC, the Center for Disease Control, upped their guidance for cruising to its highest level, a level four alert. And that level four advised that no one should take a cruise. No one, no matter what their vaccination status was. And as I discussed last week with my featured guest, Charles Sylvia, ECC Vice President of Industry and Trade Relations at CLIA, this was always a bit perplexing to not only CLIA, but the travel industry as a whole, because the science didn't match that level four need as the numbers on land far outpaced the numbers and the percentage of COVID cases on the ship. Well, with this week's lowering of that alert back to a level three, it does put the CDC and organizations like CLIA back somewhat on the same page. In a release statement from this Tuesday, the CLIA organization called the downgrade a step in the right direction. Thank the CDC for recognizing the efforts made in the areas of health and safety on board. And again, quoting from that release stated, as a result, cases of COVID-19 are very low with the vast majority mild or asymptomatic, making crews unequaled in its multi-layered approach to effectively mitigating COVID-19. This has been an ongoing story, right? I mean, I know here at On Deck with Avoya, we've been covering this CDC and their guidance for the cruise industry since our very first, uh, our first broadcast back in October of 2020. And of course, we'll continue to follow and share the latest during our weekly episodes. In other cruise news, Carnival Cruise Lines will say goodbye to two of its oldest ships in the fleet as the Carnival Sensation, which has not sailed since the industry shut down in March of 2020, and it's not coming back to service, and the Carnival Ecstasy, which will first finish a summer season deployment out of Mobile, Alabama, and then will be retired from service. Now, the Carnival Ecstasy became Carnival's oldest ship once they sold the original Fantasy class ship, the Carnival Fantasy, for scrap in the summer of 2020. 
The Ecstasy entered service in 1991. So yeah, it's a little long in the tooth. It was the second fantasy class ship. Now with this retirement news, Carnival Cruise Lines also announced changes for Jacksonville, Florida and Mobile, Alabama, the two ports most affected by these ships. The Carnival Spirit's gonna replace the Ecstasy in Jacksonville in the short term, although they haven't announced what they're gonna do from Jacksonville after April 23rd. That uh, announcement should be made here in the very near future. And then cruises out of Mobile, they're certain for the summer because that's where they're sending the ecstasy. But then it's a little unsure after October. They haven't made any announcements yet, but they do promise an announcement's coming and we'll continue to follow the story. And finally, Virgin Voyages has opened their first cruise terminal in the Port of Miami. And of course, it includes a bit of that Virgin uniqueness that the brand is known for. Here are a few of the features of this new terminal. One, and you can see the picture, it's a three-story, environmentally friendly, LEED gold certified building that's named Terminal V, of course, for Virgin Voyages. The building's huge, too. 132,000 square feet. It features a VIP entrance, an alfresco terrace, and a rooftop that's designed to look like a palm tree canopy. And it features a unique address, 718 North Cruise Boulevard. And that's a nod to founder Richard Branson's birthday, of July 18th. Now, quoting Virgin Voyages founder Sir Richard Branson, coming to this beautiful new terminal and seeing Scarlet Lady in her home port here in Miami has been such an incredible experience. Branson went on to say that the team at Virgin Voyages has created a stunning building that delivers on our commitment to being better stewards of the earth with its LEED gold certification. The terminal will service the Scarlet Lady alone for now until sister ship, the Valiant Lady, joins her in the winter of 22. And I've heard nothing but positive reviews for this ship, and maybe some of you have been on it. Um, I know that uh, Marissa Smith, marketing coordinator for Avoya Travel, who produces our show weekly, she recently sailed on it. She had nothing but amazing things to say, and I certainly hope I get my chance to sail here coming up this year. Time for our weekly Q&A segment. And before we get to today's guest, I want to say thank you to all those that took the time out to watch, to comment, to reach out to me personally about last week's show with Charlie from Clea. Charles Sylvia is a very high profile member of the travel industry, and we're honored that he continues to give up his time so freely. And I promise it's not going to be the last time we have Charlie on the program. I have to say, though, I'm equally excited for this week's featured guests and discussion. Nothing better than firsthand boots on the ground knowledge that could only come from those actively selling travel and engaging with clients. Chuck Conine, owner of Travel with Charlie LLC, an independent agency in the Avoyan Network, would certainly fit that bill. Chuck is a very engaged, dedicated travel professional. He's a longtime and successful member of our network, and we're excited that he's our Meet the Network guest today for On Deck with Avoya, your weekly travel update. So let's welcome in our featured guest this week, Chuck Conine, owner of Travel with Charlie LLC. Chuck, so great to have you on our show, and thanks so much for your time today. Chris. Thank you. You you sound so excited. Uh, I have to be excited, too. Absolutely. Good energy is always good for everybody, right? And I mean, finally, there's some yes, stuff to absolutely. be excited about. So so before we get into current happenings, I was hoping that maybe you'd give us a little bit of a, you know, some information on your personal background and how you got into travel and ended up as an affiliate in the Avoya Travel Network. Well, way back in the dark ages, I was fortunate enough to attend the Cornell University School of Hotel Administration, uh, where travel was one of the big subjects we talked about. Uh, people traveling to hotels, traveling to conferences, traveling for leisure, and simply wanting to see more of the world around them. And that was how it was presented to us, to be uh, curious about the world around us. So after I got out of school, uh, I was fortunate enough to work in hotels and restaurants uh, for the next 40 years. And that was from the lens of the human re resources department. We started out as personnel, uh, filling out forms, answering questions. And later we evolved significantly into an equal partner with the other senior leadership members uh, of the team. And eventually, uh, I decided I, I was looking for something else to do. 
And I was actually on a cruise with uh, good friends and former neighbors, Ricky and David Levine, who were uh, independent agents with Voya. They suggested to me, you know, you'd be great for this, having been in the hospitality industry. And that's how I got here. Well, they certainly had great instincts because we're certainly glad that you made it to avoid travel. Chuck, did you grow up with a love of travel or was that something that you discovered a little bit later on in life? Well, when I was, when I was a kid, uh, I watched my relatives taking pretty nice vacations, mostly to Europe, uh, doing the winter thing in Florida. Uh, I was confined to going to Cape Cod and throwing sand at my cousins. <laughs> but as I grew up, uh, there was no more throwing of sand. And I, uh, I remember my first trip to London, which was a whole new world for me uh, as a guy that had been pretty confined to my desk for a lot of years. After I got a taste of that, it was uh, something I couldn't, it was a thirst I couldn't quench, Chris. And then uh, I began to really delve into travel, and that uh, got me very interested in responding to my friend Ricky and David's request to join them at Avoya. Chuck, have you had a chance to go back to Cape Cod since you were a kid and, and kind of see it now oh, through yes. a more seasoned person's eyes? Oh, absolutely. Of course, now I'm looking at, you know, how how are the restaurants serving all these people and not having enough staff? Yeah, it's a, it's a crazy uh, time for the restaurants, for sure. Uh, let's yeah, talk about some current much. events right, right now. Um, Chuck, tell me some of the ways that you're trying to stay engaged with your clients and some of the strategies that you've implemented during these challenging times. Well, maybe it's just easy for, easier for me, Chris, uh, because I like to talk and I love developing relationships with people. Um, that served me well as a human resources guy. But I actually consider clients really and truly members of my family. And I often call them just to say hello. And that, uh, that surprised people in the beginning but after I did it more than once, they said, oh, hi, Chuck, how have you been? <laughs> and that's, that's the main way uh, that I chose to keep in touch. And I know when you and I talked earlier, you were uh, interested in hearing about what did I do with them during the pandemic? And it was that. It really was uh, writing notes, uh, remembering their birthdays, asking about their kids who in the six years that I've been in the network have started to grow up and remembering them in ways that uh, show them that I'm a person, not uh, a salesman. And that I think makes a heck of a difference. So, you know, for those listening today, I would say to you, uh, if you like people, and you value relationships and developing relationships with your clients, then uh, you've come to the right place. Because really, Chris, wouldn't you say that's what a boy is all about? It really is. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think for anybody that's watched my program over the course of the last year and a half as it's developed, and we've had that chance to talk to people like Chuck before that have been in our network, there's a theme that seems to keep resonating up. And that's that if you really are a genuine person and, and you kind of approach things from that genuine standpoint, it ends up being a pretty amazing closing tool. And it really does serve your ultimate purpose in some ways too, is closing more sales. Well, I mean, I've, I've seen it work for me. Uh, we were right on the edge of uh a million dollars in sales in my agency last year. And uh, we're certainly headed in that direction again this year, even though, you know, there have been a lot of roller coaster ish moments with COVID uh, and uh, the CDC, uh, you know, changing its, uh, its ratings. But even that, 
uh, can be conquered, we've found in our agency because uh, the ILAs that work with me, the individual licensed, independent licensed agents that work with me uh, at our agencies have excelled. Uh, I mean, one of my ILAs during a period when we were just coming out of the pandemic sold $40,000 of travel in a week. Diana Mori and I, you know, I just marvel. But again, she's another one that that believes in personal relationships with her clients. So I keep coming back to that topic, no matter what question you ask me. Well, there's a reason for that because it keeps percolating up in in, in your story, so it makes sense. Now, do you find that there's certain resources that are offered to your agency by Avoya Travel that make it easier to engage, and are those some of those resources that you really you know, rely heavily on, Chuck? Well, I'll tell you something. Uh, I'm really glad that this question is part of our experience with those uh, attending today. Uh, the biggest thing that helped me was getting to know the leadership team and the department heads, people like you, for example, Chris. Uh, I was just... Uh, Chris and I were talking online before the uh, show today, and we were uh, commenting that we'd known each other for six years, and we talked about the last time we saw each other. This is the experience that you can expect to have as an IA, an in independent agent with Voya. Not, uh, not just, you know, seeing people from a distance. They're not people who sit in this big, massive office somewhere that you never get to speak with. These are typical, regular people who happen to be immensely talented at what they do. And that's everybody from our uh, assistants to our uh, marketing resources team to those people like Marissa who produce these excellent webinars, uh, to people like Chris who puts together uh, a vast group of people to help you as potential IAs understand what it's like to be here, to be part of uh, this team of real people looking to build relationships with their clients. Chuck, wow, thank you so much for, for not only those kind words about myself personally, but about Avoya Travel overall. And it really does go to the heart of what we try to talk about, which is Avoya Travel, our whole business model is unique. It's a, a shared success model, and it does require that interaction between those of us who work for the company right. and those that are in the network in order to achieve the, the, the level of results that we have in the past. And even more exciting, I think, where we're going to go in the future. So, again, thank you so much for that. It, it really means a lot to, to hear that coming from you. What are you hearing from clients these days, Chuck? Uh, are they excited to travel? Are they cautious? Is there a mixture of both? I mean, you said the word roller coaster a minute ago. Well, I'll tell you something. The roller coaster is real. Uh, I... You know, the restaurant business, okay, yeah, it was a few ups and downs, but for the most part, people have to eat. So uh, I wasn't always worried about the sales end of the business. I was more worried about the reaction of my team to the occasional ups and downs. And, and in this business, I worry about the reaction of my clients and, and also the vendors who we deal with because uh, they've had a lot of changes uh, to contend with over the last 20 plus months. Uh, basically what I'm hearing, Chris, is exactly what you mentioned at the top of the show, which was that you'd read an article called Revenge Travel in the, uh, in the Washington Post. Uh, just for the show, I read it too. And I thought, well, I'll break this like breaking news and you beat me to it. <laughs> so it, it, it really, I did. It's a great article and I certainly recommend it to those watching. Uh, it's in today's Washington Post. And it's all about something that I have experienced 
personally with clients, and that is, uh, you know, I think we're going to upgrade to business class on our trip this year. Uh, the air, can you get us business class? And we're an agency that happens to book air, so of course we're happy to do that. Not for the commission, because air commission's minimal, but for the joy of travel, made even more joyful by people who were able to relax on their way to their once in a lifetime adventure, you know, exploring uh, Asia, let's say. Uh, and I, I hear people talking about getting suites on cruise ships. I hear them talking more about booking longer cruises. And in one, thing, in one particular month, I booked three world cruises. Wow. And world cruises, yeah, you didn't know about that. I thought it was kind of a viral rumor <laughs> around Avoya, but I actually did book three world cruises. And the, the people who booked them were all good clients of mine. Again, the personal relationships. But they had been sitting at home, and they were tired of sitting at home. So, you know, to you prospective IAs, imagine the thrill of uh, someone who'd not booked even one world cruise in five years with a Boya, being able to book three in two months' time, and that uh, was was quite a thrill. So to me, that's kind of the top of the pile for what I'm hearing from clients. Yes, some of them are still a little cautious about where particularly they might want to travel, but I find them very educated, uh, Chris, uh, very educated about the realities of travel. Wear your mask, uh, wash your hands frequently, try to avoid large crowds if you can, and uh, pay attention to whatever advisories or uh, health information you receive. If you still have to get a PCR test to visit a country, so what? Big deal. In other words, clients are getting more into the idea that some of these precautions may be long term and they're willing to accept the risk uh, of such as it is, I mean, it's a, it's certainly a lowering risk of travel. You mentioned the CDC warning. They're willing to accept the risk, and consequently, they 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 accommodate it. They build it into their planning for their trips. And I, honestly, I've had fewer questions in the last few weeks. You talk about sales going up. Ours have zoomed like a rocket. And not one person says, do you think I should travel? Yeah, I think so the, the traveling that's... public is pretty aware right now of what's going on. And we all know that, you know, clients love to do some research on their own trip anyway. Sometimes that can be for the good. And of course, sometimes that can get them, you know, off on, <laughs> on a wild tangent. But, <laughs> but, but right. it is nice. And the fact is, is that it, like you're at one of these amazing world-class UNESCO World Heritage Sites it's going to be just as beautiful whether or not you're wearing the mask or whether or not you're not wearing a mask, right? I mean, if you're standing in front of, you're in Europe and you're seeing the statue of David or you're looking at the Mona Lisa or whatever, still the same breathtaking experience that you had with or without. So it's nice to hear that clients uh, understand that as well and are accommodating towards that. What are some of the specialties that you sell, Chuck? And, and what kind of things do you do to make sure that you personally stay up on the latest information on those vendors and those destinations? Well, I've, I've uh, sort of migrated. Uh, when I first started with Avoya, uh, since I had not had any experience selling travel, and, and those of you watching today who were like me when I began did not have experience selling travel, I took advantage of Avoya's outstanding live lead program. And the live lead program not only helped me to understand, as did the training that was offered, which is second to none as far as I'm concerned, uh, helped, they helped, it helped me to understand the differences among clients, which clients would choose which specialties uh, uh, and why. So over time, as I developed some of my own clients, 
uh, and also working with Leeds, it seemed to me that more people uh, would accept higher rated cruise companies and, and more uh, costly cruises uh, and other types of travel uh, if they fully understand the value that was being offered. And so the concept of value for me makes made a big difference in, in uh, discussing travel with my clients. And that led me to cruise lines such as Crystal, who unfortunately is at least temporarily not with us anymore, uh, Seaborn, Conant, Silver Sea, Regent. I, I market and service uh, clients in all of those areas. There's also a kind of a new niche that emerged in the last year or so uh, in celebrity cruises. And they've become known as, or they marketed themselves sort of as the new luxury. And the new luxury really is that uh, with their uh, all-inclusive program that is part of every single client's fare. So they're easy to sell, Chris, and I, you know, it would be nutsy for me. Uh, I think everybody on our team sells celebrity. Uh, we also do land tours. We try to uh, incorporate partly packaged tours by operators such as Abercrombie and Kent or Kensington. Uh, there are some budget operators, Globus, Family and Brands does a great job in that area. They're one of our preferred vendors. And uh, we also do self-curated, individually curated custom tours for clients. And again, this is not so easy if you don't know the client because it really, it really takes a while to sort of mesh the brains uh, so that we understand what the client's looking for and can respond accordingly without wasting their time. We just finished a wonderful 11 day trip on the uh, Italian Riviera, uh, basically the Amalfi Coast uh, for some fairly well off people. And they raved about the specialty tour guide that we had set up for them and the hotels that we picked for them. and. Of course, the business class deal, uh, airfare that we found for them. And I think when you put all of those specialties together, it's kind of an interesting mix. You know, I want to say something to those that are watching, because I, I talk about it a lot, about the concept of taking the time and making the effort to make yourself an expert. And when I say that, it's people like Chuck that I'm talking about, because as you listen to Chuck talk, you it's clear that Chuck has taken the time and he's engaged with his business to the point where he has become the expert. And that's why he's able to, to have those kind of bookings and to have that kind of resonate, you know, what he says resonates with his clients at that level. Because again, Chuck has taken the time to elevate his game to be the true expert. And that's what clients depend on you for is that expertise to find that right value to create the, you know, a trip of a lifetime. Chuck Conine, owner of Travel with Charlie LLC, the independent agency in the Aboya Networks, our featured Meet the Network guest this week. Chuck, I know you also participate and you're a member of the Network Advisory Board for 2022. Congratulations on that. And tell me a little Thank bit you. about what that entails and your goals for being part of that process. Well, I first of all, uh, I was honored uh, to be selected. There are 11 independent agents who serve uh, at the pleasure of our leadership team as advisors and uh, as it states in the name advocacy board, we advocate for our fellow independent agents in ways that are designed to not only improve the communication uh, uh, between uh, senior leadership and the IAs, but also to create a open line of input from IAs to leadership and vice versa. And I think the experience for me thus far anyway, has been a real eye opener. It merely, frankly, confirms 
what I have learned to be true about Avoya, and that is uh, the company is truly interested in not only what I might have to say as a member of an advocacy board, but every single independent agent who serves with me, whether it's on an advocacy board or not. And because of that, uh, those people who are not on the advocacy board, I think have a better understanding uh, because that board is there of not only what it takes to run a business like this as a, as a member of the leadership team, you know, uh, but also what it takes to excel in a company like this uh, as an IA. And so it's my pleasure to be uh, on the on the board, and I certainly look forward to uh, continuing the process of communication with uh, our leadership team. They are just an outstanding group of talented professionals, and each one of them uh, comes with a built-in open mind, which I think is tremendous for a company our size. Don't you, Chris? I do. I do very much, Chuck. And I think it goes right to the heart again of that shared success relationship that you would have that open line of communication and that Avoya Travel would want and does solicit that feedback from people like yourself and the other members who serve on that advisory board. So again, thank you for making time to participate in that. Let's talk about a couple of fun things, Chuck. I mean, one of the great benefits of being in the travel business is travel benefits. And what are some of the amazing places that you've had a chance to travel to because of being in the travel industry? I tell you, last December, uh, thanks to the uh, the ability of one of my very talented uh, ILAs, Tony Sabella, who uh, actually he and I went to Cornell together back in the dark ages. He is outstanding at planning luxury travel. So he planned this trip for us to go to uh, Thailand. And we spent five days in Bangkok. Uh, basically, we were doing sort of a fam trip to curate for our clients, our luxury clients. So we stayed at a really fine hotel that he had picked personally in Bangkok. We made appointments with and met some of the leadership in that property. We experienced all of their food facilities. And then we went out and walked the streets in Bangkok and saw some great restaurants, ate at two Michelin star restaurants, ate street food, uh, uh, had tea, high tea in the hotel lobby in the afternoon. Did that for five days until I was ready for a rest. So we ended up going to the island of Lanta, uh, uh, which is in the south. Uh, in the southern provinces of Thailand, and we stayed at a what I would refer to as a six-star resort with uh, in a jungle, literally, uh, which is owned by a gentleman who is uh, into wellness, and he is in the process of creating this wellness paradise for uh, his uh, clients. And he believes in, in uh, you know, animals, uh, the sanctuary of the animal, the beauty, the natural beauty of Thailand. And let me tell you, Chris, <laughs> it was so luxurious and so private and such good food and such nice people. I thought, why would anybody leave here? You know, could I? Could I set up my internet here and convince everybody that I'm in my office in Palm Springs? I don't know, but I'd sure like to try it. And uh, anyway, that was that's the highlight of the last few years of my travel. I've been traveling quite a bit, and uh, but that's really been a highlight, I must say. Sounds amazing, Chuck. Hey, listen, we've got time for one last question, then we've got to wrap up our, sure. our segment, but. How would you gauge your level of enthusiasm for the future of leisure travel? I mean, with everything you know and all that you participate in, how would you gauge your, your level of, of the future of our industry? I'm very enthusiastic. 
Uh, I know you are. Uh, I know uh, Jeff and Mike Anderson, our co-presidents, are. And I, I think that people, particularly after this pandemic, have learned to appreciate life and to appreciate what we have. Uh, you know, sure, we are sad about those we've lost. We're sad about all of the things that are very different in our lives now than they were before. But the one thing that is constant, and this was something, as I mentioned earlier, that I learned back at Cornell, is to be curious about the world around us. And thanks to, you know, very good writing in, uh, such as in the New York Times Travel Review and so on, you see on the part of journalists, particularly in photographers, a great uh, increase in their interest in telling the story of others so that we can learn to appreciate other cultures. And you can't do that fully unless you're there. So my enthusiasm, I think you can see it and feel it, my enthusiasm is real, and uh, I believe the majority of my clients feel exactly the same way. Well said. Chuck Conine, everyone, owner of Travel with Charlie, LLC, an independent agency in the Avoya Travel Network. Chuck, thanks again for your time and for that great conversation, and stay curious, my friend. You too. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. Next week, our featured guest will be Avoya Insider Skip 48. Skip is the vice president of network expansion. He leads the team and sources all of the independent agencies for our network. And he's also very involved with organizations like ASTA and their ongoing legislative efforts on behalf of the travel industry. I look forward to welcoming Skip back to On Deck with Avoya next Thursday. Wow, five weeks, five weeks until Cruise 360. We're gonna be at the newly revamped Broward Convention Center in Fort Lauderdale. And one of the big events, one of our featured uh, speakers uh, for that uh, event will be our own Tammy Ritchie, Vice President of Network Engagement. Um, of course, it's going to be, it's open to anybody going to Cruise 360. But again, like a lot of these things, capacity is limited. If you're going to 360, you might want to look up and see if you can't register. If registration is already closed for the event, when you get to the event, maybe there's going to be a, a, some openings. Tammy is really popular, but we're really excited to be there and support Tammy as she talks about how to identify and adapt your client's buying style for a more successful and enjoyable business relationship. So the date's gonna be the 31st of March. Tammy's speaking from 9.15 to 10 in the morning, that's Eastern time. Again, it's at Cruise 360. It'll be at the Broward Convention Center. And we can't wait to, uh, you know, to, to share in that great event and, and cheer Tammy on. She does an amazing job. All right, our resources, as you heard Chuck talk about, they're geared both towards those that are new to the industry. You can go from knowing nothing and then by participating, you can be an expert like Chuck is, or you can come in already with a ton of experience. We do have programs for both. We can meet that level no matter where you are in the industry, but you do gain access to best in class marketing, technology, support, education, build the business that you want, and we'll help you with everything you need to grow that business. How do you reach out? It's pretty easy. My email, chris.green at avoyatravel.com. There's the toll-free number, or maybe not toll-free. I can't keep track these days. Who cares about toll-free? None of us pay phone charges anyway. So there's the number. Or avoyatnetwork.com is obviously the easiest place to get a bunch of information. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to share the details about Avoya Travel and make what makes our network so unique and see if together we can put together the beginning stages of a shared success relationship. Big thank you again to Chuck Conine. Big thank you again to Marissa Smith for doing a great job as our marketing coordinator and the producer of our segment. And thank you for being part of On Deck with Avoya. Until next week, take care, everyone.